Okay. All right, guys, we are all set up. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Today we're here. We are going to talk about buying new construction. So we always get lots of questions from buyers around the purchasing of new construction versus purchasing resale homes. And so today I'm here with our new construction experts on the Gary Mercer Group, Erica Walker, Sharon Diano, and Alex Erkel, and we're going to answer questions that you have. So feel free to chime in live if you have any questions, but we're going to get started today with first talking about, do I really need an agent to purchase new construction? Erica, can you talk to us about you know, what your experience has been as an agent representing buyers in new construction? Sure. I would say as an agent uh, now in resale, I definitely see the benefit in uh, having a agent represent you. So keep in mind that the agent that's sitting there in the model home, as nice as they are, they represent the builder. So they don't represent you. They're considered a seller's agent. They're not considered a buyer's agent. So unfortunately, they don't um, fully represent you in your best interest in the entire transaction. So uh, you do not get a better deal um, using the site rep and not having representation. Um, as a, a, buyer's represent, a buyer's agent, that's what we would be um, for you in this transaction, that would mean that we're representing your best interest. So we can negotiate for you. Um, why would the builder's sales rep negotiate for you if they get paid by the builder? They um, wouldn't want to harm the hand that feeds them, would they? So a lot of times people think, okay, well, if I don't have an agent, right, the builder will credit me the commission back, right? Um, and what we know from also representing a number of builders, whether it be local or national, is that these commissions are already built into their pro formas, right? right. Um, so it's not that as a, you know, let's say working for a, a national builder as a site agent that you're able to make those decisions or even that when they negotiate and they, they bring your offer to a higher up that they're gonna make those because everything is already built in. Yeah, it's already baked into the price. So you're not gonna get a better deal by not bringing representation. So why would you not bring representation? Um, somebody who's looking out for your best interests and to help you negotiate to actually get a better, better deal. Um, we know obviously as, as our experience in the past all working for new construction um, and builders, we know where to kind of go with that in terms of where to negotiate, which exactly. Sharon can talk a little bit about. Yep. So Sharon, can you tell us, you know, a lot of times a builder likes to negotiate in a certain way, right? So it's important, again, when you have an agent who's representing you, that you know that they are familiar with how builders work and the different types of ways that you can negotiate with them to maybe not always get a lower price, but get the best. Uh-oh. Sharon, you're muted. Sharon, you can just go, I guess. I think I'm gonna go with it, yeah. So here's where being an expert in your market um, really counts because every builder is gonna to wanna to negotiate in a different way. Some may not wanna negotiate at all, but if we have past experiences with so many of the builders in our area, we'll know the right um, things that they'd be willing to do. And some of the things that they can do is possibly buy down your rate, which will, that's a great impact to you as a buyer, your monthly payment would be less. Sometimes they'll do a credit towards closing costs. Um, they're gonna wanna keep their price up high so that it doesn't start to deflate the prices in their community. So they're gonna probably look for these other ways to incentivize you if that's what it needs to happen to make the deal happen. Um, you could also get maybe some additional money towards options. Um, sometimes, not often, but maybe you could get them to reduce or remove a lot premium. But again, it all depends on the builder and the experiences that we in our, uh, as agents have in this marketplace. Absolutely, I mean, we know that there's certain builders where we will negotiate a little bit differently than other builders. And there's gonna be some that we're also gonna, you know, inform our clients, hey, this, this builder isn't gonna budge on this. And, and we know that from past experience. Um, but, you know, you have an opportunity to maybe get in at the beginning of a community and you are going to build equity. 
right? So it's just a combination of decisions. Maybe you're getting pre-construction pricing and they're not going to offer any further incentives, but each one is a little bit different and you have to have the knowledge behind you to be able to, to kind of help guide your clients you know, to the, to the best option. The other thing too is um, kind of where we, and I'm gonna just jump a little bit around here because I feel like this, this goes in with negotiation a little bit is Alex, on kind of picking upgrades and selections, right? So as an agent being involved with some of those structural decisions, some of those upgrades, um, you know what buyers want, right? You know that what makes sense to, to upgrade and what doesn't, right? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, we need to be there to kind of separate reality from like the model home fantasy as well. Um, because when you get to hand select so many elements, um, we find that you are tempted in some instances to, um, kind of go and build out your home. And then you're looking at the price, like, oh my gosh, I cannot afford this. Um, and a lot of times, um, the highest profit margins for the builders is in the upgrades. So, um, some builders in particular will upsell you on upgrades where others, it, it really doesn't matter. So we know the difference there as well. Um, but we can help guide you to pick the upgrades that we believe you should probably do now in the construction process, usually structural upgrades. Um, and some that will save you a lot of money down the line doing afterwards. For instance, an easy one is appliances. You can either pay $5,000 through the builder and um, pay that on a 30 year loan with a 4% interest rate, or you can go to Home Depot afterwards and get a, um, zero percent interest for two years um so there are, are there are small things like that that um, we can definitely help you out with absolutely so that's such a good point and two we can also look at okay well what's the builder charging for this and what do we know is more like market rate right so kind of keeping those prices in check and, and kind of looking at okay i think you can probably more affordably do this a little bit later because i think they're you know, maybe this is a little bit on the high side in terms of, in terms of pricing. Um, so a, a lot of times we talk about this with, uh, with finished basements. So we have this conversation a lot around finished basements. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then the other thing we can do too is um, also kind of give a little bit of advice on some of those um, selections from like a color perspective and from like a future resale value perspective too. Um, you know, you as a new home buyer, many times if you're not buying a spec home, you have the option to really kind of, you know, it's a blank slate. So we can always help guide you with one of those, um, you know, what are going to be the timeless selections versus what is trendy right now. Uh, so I think that's always something really important to consider. Um, so let's just jump back again, going back to kind of value, um, Alex, will I get a better deal if I use the builder's mortgage and title company? And this is always an interesting one, um, dealing with it right now with buyers. Yeah. So the, because it's always good to compare, um, and shop the lenders because regardless of if you're buying new or if you're, you're buying a resale, but, um, because a lot of times the buyer or the builder will build in, um, they might be giving you uh, a concession, but we'll build that into a higher rate or different fees. Um, so it may not make as much sense um, to do it in that case. Uh, another reason is that there are, um, there are different national builders that actually own their mortgage company. Um, and in that case, they may be able to get you a better deal than the ones that just have preferred lenders that they use. Um, so we always, always recommend shopping lenders to make sure that you are in fact getting the best um, rate or deal or incentive. Yeah, and I know Erica, you have had a couple situations like that where, you know, sometimes the builder's incentive really isn't the best way to go. And it is better if you're looking at a long-term scenario. If this is a home that someone's going to plan on occupying for 15, 20 years, sometimes it makes sense to walk away from that incentive as good as it may sound, because over the long haul, a better, more aggressive rate ultimately makes more sense. Yeah, definitely taking that good faith estimate and shopping shopping it around to lenders that we can recommend is, is the best scenario and best way to get 
you know, the best rates and fees and know that you're getting a good deal or not. Um, and look for the hidden fees because there's definitely um, hidden mortgage yeah. points. They call loan origination fees. Uh, there's, there's so many hidden ways that they can um, tap on the additional costs. So getting the good faith estimate and shopping it around is smart. Absolutely. Um, now, one of the other things that we talk about with new construction that a lot of people don't really think they need is a home inspection. So Sharon, talk to us about, you know, the value of a home inspection, even though you are buying a brand new house. Um, it's always a good idea to have a third party um, take a look at that house um, because it's interesting, even though the township inspects the house through every phase, um, there have been many times when the home inspector, when it's done, they have found structural defects, possibly foundation issues, grading, framing, window leaks, plumbing, HVAC, um, insulation, all those things are a part of your contract, but it all depends upon the project manager of the community as to how well those things are being reviewed and looked at. And the same thing with the townships, each building inspector is not the same, even though they are doing things within code, just that that money spent for a home inspector, you can have it done typically twice, like one time at frame. So when the electrical is done and the plumbing is done and you can still before the drywall is on, have an inspector look at the house then. And then maybe at the time right before you settle, just when all the systems are done and have those, make sure the heating is working and the hot water heater is working, all those things. It's worth the money. Absolutely. And we just started, um and a three-part home inspection. So we've added actually one step to the typical pre-drywall home inspection and then pre-settlement drywall or pre-settlement inspection. And we've done what's called, we've, we've teamed up with uh, Spotlight Home Inspections and we're doing what's called a building envelope inspection as well. So this is before any of that, the house gets wrapped, whether it's in siding, whether it's in hardy, whether it's in stone, whatever it may be, uh, the inspector will come out, take a look at flashings, make a, make sure that the wrap, the house wrap has been done correctly before any of the exterior materials go on. So that's a great added benefit that we've just uh, put together with the spotlight inspection team. And I'm really excited because we do feel that that brings just another level of value to our new construction buyers. And again, you know, it's just good to have another set of eyes and then the, and the builders appreciate it too. So yeah, are they charging much more to do that third um, inspection? Um, it's going to be a little bit more. It is going to be a little bit more than your regular inspection because it adds another third stop out at the house. Um, but I think it's worth it all day long because I would rather catch any type of, you know, questionable anything um, in the on the front end, whereas it could cause major issues, you know, down the road. So it's, it's a great program. I would hands down do it if I was purchasing new construction myself. Now, lastly, let's just kind of talk a little bit, Erica, about new construction versus resale and kind of the, the benefits that new construction can, new construction can offer um, a particular home buyer. Sure, so um, new versus used, right? This is something that I always used when I sold new construction. Um, a new home, first of all, always has the most modern floor plans, right? They were created more recently um, versus a 25 year old home. It definitely has the more open floor plans, modern architecture, um, and then the conveniences of like an attached garage versus typically a detached garage is, is not um, sold in new construction, at least in this area, it doesn't do that well. Um, and then you're gonna also have more than one full bathroom, right? And I don't know any new construction in our area that uh, has one full bathroom. So they're all going to have at least two full bathrooms. So you're going to get more conveniences like that with inside the home in a modern floor plan. Um, also, they're going to require less maintenance, right? They're going to all have brand new systems that everything's got a warranty. The windows have a warranty, the HVAC system, the roof, the siding, the appliances, your faucets, all your fixtures throughout the house, everything has a warranty. So you get a huge binder. Um, that comes with the house, typically with new construction, that shows all those warranties that come standard with the house. So it's great to, to be able to move in and not have to, to tinker with anything. You can really just um, sit back and enjoy the house, at least for the first five years, you're, you're definitely um, covered. 
the builder has their own warranty too. So those were just the manufacturer's warranties, but the builder has its own warranty. Typically they have like a one, two and 10 year warranty um, covering different things. So you definitely wanna check and see what the builder's warranties that come included with the house would be and what they cover. Um, and then you're gonna be able to move in with new construction a little bit um, longer time frame, So you can move in with less money, let's say. So you can buy a house and then maybe not be able to move in. If they don't have a quick delivery, it might be like a six to 12 month process. So you can save more money. So over that time period, um, it's great to be able to, to pack away the money um, and save it towards the house versus being able to move in. In a resale, it would be like a six, you know, 30 to 90 day uh, move in time frame. So you'd need that money a lot sooner. Um, so you can save more money and put a little bit more down. Um, and then new construction, they're all um, built with current codes. So energy codes, as long as the outlet codes for GFCIs, you don't have to worry about anything not being up to the current standards with codes in the house, as well as um, insulation. The insulation is all going to be, you know, the, the top uh, quality insulation that's required by the township or required by that builder. Some builders go above and beyond with energy codes. Um, and then the last thing is the house is going to be clean, right? So you're moving into a brand new house that you got to pick out all of the selections, hopefully throughout the house. Um, and the house is going to be clean. There's not going to be what we used to say, like toenails in the carpet or like somebody else <laughs> blood on the toilet. So <laughs> So it's clean. Nobody else has lived there. It's only your stuff. Um, and hopefully, you know, that's an added bonus for you. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much. I think that was a really good comprehensive list. Um, if anybody has any questions about new construction that maybe we didn't cover today, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here, always available to answer any questions and, and share all the experience that we have. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in today and stay tuned. We'll have some new topics coming up next week. Thank you. Thank you.